Look at this guy. In front of the window, where he usually is. I'll be back. Today, we're starting off with something completely random. All right, boys, here it is. I don't ever show this on camera. This is my 2014 Skeeter uh, 195 TZX bass boat. Uh, when I am not doing car stuff and annoying myself with online work and annoying myself with car stuff, this is what I like to do in my spare time. But everything has been closed with all the COVID corona stuff going down. There hasn't been any boat ramps open. All the parks have been closed, everything. So now they're just starting to open that back up and I need to come get my boat in kind of tip top shape. I was having a problem with one of the deep cycle batteries. Uh, I think it was, if you're not familiar with deep cycle batteries, you have to add distilled water to the cells. And I think one of them was pretty dry. So I came yesterday, added water to it, tried to do a deep cycle rejuvenation, uh, kind of shock, uh, shock charge it, and then put it back on the charger. So what we're doing today is, and this is just gonna take five minutes, what we're doing, coming here to see if that battery has actually held a charge or is still charging. Fingers crossed, because if you don't know, deep cycle batteries are, boat stuff is expensive. Deep cycle batteries are expensive, just, Life is expensive. So, let's see how this works. If any of y'all are into bass fishing, this is what I do. I am flipping for bass whenever I can. A ton of good lakes here in Texas. So let's see if battery one is working. Nope, still not. You only want one green light there. What does that say, check connection? It does say full charge, but it still says check connection. Hmm. Well, I actually was just looking at something in here. This little breaker, um, I remember I pushed it the other day and I forgot to pop it back in. So now it's back in and that would solve the uh, connection issue. That red light that you saw blinking was a check connection. And that connects these two, uh, the two batteries together. Uh, that should fix that. So now once this comes to full charge, I wonder if we will get that check connection light. I don't think we will. I think that should be good. And I think rejuvenating these batteries may have worked. Knock on wood because then I won't have to use those ones. So we're going to let these batteries do their thing, sit on the charger for another night. Hope that they, uh, hope that it works. And then I'll be able to get out. Do you guys fish at all? Just let me know. Just curious. I mean, I probably won't throw it in any vlogs or anything, but if you guys like fishing stuff, I mean, I, I would love to do that more often and put it on camera because I just love going fishing in Texas is just amazing for that. So done here. All I wanted to do is check on that back to the back cave to get to work on the cars. Cause I got something kind of fun to do to the E36 today. <laughs> and just like that, we are back in the back cave. So today, like I said, we're working on something with the E36. Uh, for those of you who've been following the channel for a while, you will know that the E36 I have has an S54 swap. Uh, we used a wire harness from, um, I believe it's Alex over at Rev Limited. Um, right now, the car is running a CSL style intake, big carbon fiber air box. When you do that, you have to remove the mass airflow sensor. So there's no MAF, which means the ECU has to be tuned a different way. Now, I'm not an expert on tuning and uh, alternative ways to run this. I do know the way we're running it is with an Alpha N tune. From my understanding with Alpha N, again, I'm not an expert, so those of you can chime in that are, um, I believe it sets like, think of it as uh, extreme parameters. So when you get X amount of throttle, full throttle, it does, um, it calculates X amount of airflow and X amount of fueling needed. When you're just driving, no throttle, it calculates. It sets like extreme highs and extreme lows and you basically tune for that on the dyno. Um, whereas if you run a mass airflow, it basically reads the amount of air coming into the system and the computer adjusts uh, automatically. So one thing I've wanted to try for a long time since I have this CSL style intake is running a CSL tune. But to do that, you need a map sensor. 
Now MAP sensor, from my understanding, is manifold actual pressure. Kind of similar to mass air airflow, I believe, but different. How is it different? No clue. I don't know at all. Uh, but I do know I don't have a MAP sensor. I don't believe S54s come with one. I believe they come with a mass airflow. So if you want a MAP sensor, you have to buy a kit. Castle Performance makes a kit, a MAP sensor conversion for this. And then you plug, you, it basically adds a MAP sensor to your engine and you wire it into your DME, your ECU, and then you can run a CSL tune. So if you caught my, well actually I think it was in this video or another video, if you caught my, one of my last videos, uh, there are two different types of ECUs for the S54. There's an MS S54 and there's an MS S54 HP. The HP, I'm not sure of the difference, but I do know it can be tuned remotely, so I have one of those coming with an actual CSL tune on it, but the first thing I need to do is install this stuff. Here is the map sensor, here's the fitting. It goes somewhere along here, uh, according to Castle, and then here's the sensor that, or the plug that plugs into the sensor, and you run the end of it actually into a couple free slots into the DME. So you basically just run this into a couple pinouts of the DME already, and that will allow you to run for a run a map sensor. Now again, I don't know what I'm doing with this. I'm actually going to reach out to a buddy, Brett, over at uh, M Sport Parts. He's gonna help me with the wiring portion of this, and Castle doesn't provide any details. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Uh, they, I called them and According to them, it's very simple. So I don't really know how simple it is, but I believe the plan of attack for me will be remove the strut tower br brace bar, and then I'm going to remove the intake, and then that will open up something that needs to be installed right around there, or right around there, or something. That goes somewhere over there, as far as I know. I can install it without the um, without it running, uh, the CSL tune and I believe what I'm going to do is get it tuned or not tuned go to a dyno to see how it runs or to see what we put down with the Alpha N even though I do know we dyno tuned this car when the swap was done and it came in with uh, 311 horsepower to the ground and 260 pound-feet to the ground um, so I'm really curious to see what type of numbers it puts down with the CSL tune running a map sensor and that's basically it. I, I really want to see what this does. And if you guys are running a CSL airbox, this is a way to run a map sensor. Quick side note, by the way, major props to M Sport Parts. He uh, sent me these uh, trunk shocks for trunks with uh, rear wings. And mine, I don't know if he's watched my videos or seen, but my trunk shocks are dead. And when you add that wing, I, they're, I, yeah, these are needed. So, muchos gracias, senor. Much appreciated. Alright boys, update time. So, like a lot of you know, especially with this car, uh, I don't know, I know enough about this car, but I don't know exactly what I'm looking at when it comes to mods like this. So I took the intake manifold off, and the thing with Castle is they give you this piece, and it connects down here somewhere, like back, back in there. But... I sent a picture of this to Brett over at M Sport Parts, and he was like, bro, what is, what's this? This, yeah, come here. Eh. This piece right here had just a little cap on the end of it, nothing coming off. And he's like, dude, what is that? And I was like, I have no idea. So he said, that is added, that is uh, a vacuum port or something. Someone added that to this, I guess this is called the balance tube, um, and that isn't, normally there so all I have to do really and had to do is run a piece of hose from here to the map sensor um, and then just plug it in and the thing with this map sensor is apparently it needs to be mounted as level as possible so 
needs to be as this little nipple area needs to be shooting straight down as best as possible. So that's the only holdup right now. Uh, but since I have this little port here, I didn't need to do all of this. But hey, I didn't know that. Now I learned it and maybe in the future that'll help me out. So I'm gonna play around with running. I have a bunch of extra hose from the S2000 motor. Uh, so I'm gonna play around with trying to route some hose from this little nipple to right back there somewhere. Um, and then see if I can mount that map sensor as even as possible. All right, so we're to the point where we're messing with the ECU now, or DME now. So I am definitely not gonna give advice on this. I'm just gonna tell you what I do here. So I'm reading the instructions. I'll post a link or put right here the instructions that I'm following. Um, obviously, disconnect the battery. Already did that. Uh, so you're gonna remove the far right one, which is X60005, something like that. Then the second to the right, which is X60004, I believe. And then this guy, X6003, something like that. Now what the instructions call for is to actually manipulate this. Sounds like we're playing the bongos. <laughs> manipulate this to slide out that little gray pin. So I'm gonna work on that. It looks like if you can, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Uh, right up there, it looks like there's something that push that I could push in or out and slide that clip out. But my main concern is I don't want to break anything. So I'm going to gently play with this and fingers crossed I don't ruin anything. All right, boys. So got the plug plugged back in. And again, uh, the map sensor goes to plug uh, 18 or pin out 18 ground goes to 16 and then power they provide you trace the pin out from pin 7 and that's power and they provide you with this clamp um, I don't know what it's called officially but it clamps onto the the uh, power wire itself and then plugs into that so that is good to go so now I'm going to grab my DME with the CSL tune, plug that in, get everything stuffed back in here, put the air, air box back on and start it up and fingers crossed everything goes good. All right, boys. So here's what we got. We got the, <clears throat> the intake couplers on, uh, everything's cleaned up over there. I'm going to reconnect the battery and just try and start it. Brett over at M sport parts had a good point. I should just try and start it to see how it runs, make sure everything's good and go from there. So that's what I'm going to do now. So everything seems to be running good. I took everything out of there uh, just so I could keep an eye on things. Um, this is a good sign, it's running. That's good. All right, boys. Man, I will tell you that intake was that was a pain in the butt to install. And I'll go over why in another video. Woo, that thing sucks. Okay, first start, well, no, I've already started it, but let's go for a drive on this thing, make sure everything is good. Starts up just fine. First drive in this. Throttle seems pretty touchy. I don't know. I know uh, the tune, we have it on sport mode because uh, I don't have a sport button in here. Um, it just, I didn't want to put one in, but this tune will adapt to my driving too. It's going to be, it's going to modify over time, but for now I just want to give a little test run. I mean, right now it drives like normal. It 
I, my fifth gear grinds off, oh, bugs me. I mean, it feels good. I don't know if I feel much of a difference. Honestly, I'm not sure how much of a difference I feel. It does feel good, it pulls hard. It could be I'm used to the S2000 too, because this definitely pulls harder than the S2000. But everything feels great. I mean, so far I'm happy. I'm really curious to see after I do some driving, I actually have a, a dyno, which we're going to be coming up to, so stick around because I'm really curious to see what the dyno numbers say for, uh, for this tune. wait to get back on the track this car is just so good the differences with the CSL tune I'm I'm not very sure of and also I don't really know the exact specs of the Alpha N tune that I was on um, again Alpha N some of you guys may be more familiar with it some of you guys may know uh, how it works and uh, how you measure like the extremes and that type of thing but I'm not too familiar with that um, but the Alpha N tune versus this, just butt dyno, it's really hard for me to tell. If I drove this every day and was doing pulls every day, I may be able to tell you a little more, but from a guy who doesn't drive this car very often, especially during lockdown to now, it's hard for me to really give an accurate. pretty hard all right so right out the gate the tune feels absolutely amazing um, there what's up buddy hey, there are a few things uh, that I was just telling Brett at M Sport parts that I noticed with this tune as opposed to the Alpha N first uh, and I'm not sure if this had to do with the tune it feels like it could have but when I would go from 0% throttle to like downshifting quick like blipping it or in between shifts like second to third let off and all the way back on there would be an intermittent hesitation um it would almost be like a cut like a fuel cut like when i jam on the throttle it would hesitate and then it would come on um just intermittently very very quickly but you could feel it and when you're shifting fast and you hit the throttle and nothing's there and then it comes on it it does you can notice it then it doesn't do that anymore so that's good Second, every time I would go to the track with the previous tune, the car would just, it smell like it, like it was running like super rich, like really, really rich, rich enough to where it would give me a headache driving at the track for like 30 minutes, just because it'd be like I was huffing gas the entire time. Um, and I, it, even just doing pulls like I just did, I would still get that sen that sensation and you could still smell it um, and notice it pretty quickly. And now I don't seem to get that anymore, so that's good. Uh, but as far as like butt dyno, I don't really notice it, a horsepower difference. I am, the, I mean, in this video, we're going to the dyno, so I'm super interested to see what it says. In terms of like pure feel, it feels amazing. Uh, it feels great. You know, if you're going to look for this tune from stock, I think it would be a massive upgrade. With that being said, um, I run a carbon airbox, but it's kind of a cheap carbon airbox. I'm thinking about ordering the Turner Motorsport airbox that is just being released now. I, I kind of want to order it because it's a great, that like Carbonius is like $3,000 and that Turner Motorsport is like $1,500. It's probably the best option you can get at that price. I know it's the best option you can get at that price. This $700 carbon air box that I have, it's not really that good. I'll be honest with you. It, it works as a carbon air box. It works. It's just a very cheap method to get the job done. And uh, there are some things that are wrong with it. Uh, I'll point that out if I switch over to the Turner Motorsport one, but um, I'm thinking about it. But enough of that. 
dino is until monday but i'm not finishing this video until we get on the dino so let's let's get there i want to show you guys see if, if the numbers uh do any justice to this tune good morning gents hope you guys are doing well it's a new day and we are en route to the dyno get a better idea of the changes this CSL tune uh, made to the car. So before, if you're new to the channel, I made roughly 311 wheel horsepower and 255 pound-feet of torque on Alpha N. So we're gonna see if the CSL tune changed any of that. It feels good. I can't really say it feels a ton better. I think I mentioned that like last time I filmed, but I'm really curious to see what the dyno says. It, it is going to be a different dyno, which I'm a little bummed about, but this one's literally 10 minutes from my house, so this one will be probably the staple that I go to all the time from this point out, uh, from this point moving forward. So, we're en route to the dyno now. Oh, it's a little bumpy, but uh, yeah, let's go get some numbers, boys. I'm stoked about this. It's a new day, boys. So, man, here's the deal. Uh, made it to torque. As you saw in the previous clips, they threw the car on the dyno. Uh, they weren't able to get in any full passes, and they were actually having some issues with their dyno software program, whatever it is. Uh, so we weren't able to get any runs. So I couldn't see, or I can't see, and I don't know what difference this CSL tune has made. Again, butt dyno, it feels good. Butt dyno feels great. Um, I'm gonna leave it as is. I've actually been doing some work with Brett over at M Sport Parts, uh, tracking down a few codes that I've had thrown first. Uh, my other DME or ECU was programmed and had a uh, evap purge control deleted because uh, I don't actually use that uh, because of the CSL air box. So that was deleted. In this DME, it's not deleted. So we threw one of those codes and then he went and dug in and actually found a few more codes that um, had popped up but no check engine lights were thrown. So I'm gonna go and drive the car and see if those pop back up. But as for the dyno and the feel, everything feels great, pulls great, everything works great, um, but just no dyno numbers yet. Uh, so I'm gonna wait on that. And then I am thinking about picking up the Turner CSL intake. Let me know your thoughts on that because with this intake, I can't run my, uh, my strut tower bar because it just, it hits right here. And when this intake is bolted on properly, it hits really bad. So you either have to push this intake way down or just not run it. And with the Turner that, since this is a lower profile on Turner, it should be able to clear just fine. Let me know your thoughts on that. I do like this air box, but again, it's just, it's a cheaper CSL style air box. Um, it worked good for the time being, but I think I want to upgrade that. And now I also have S2000 parts in route, so that should be back up and running by this weekend. Knock on wood. I think I'll have that uh, back and operational. So then 
we should be able to start getting some fun content with that. And then also, the E92 should be done from getting its rod bearings changed this weekend as well. That's gonna be, um, I can't wait to see what that looks like. 172,000 mile E92 that's never had rod bearings changed. What? That blows my mind. <laughs> anyway, if you're new to the channel guys, smash that subscribe. I got a ton of stuff coming up and I hope to see you on the next video. Peace.